The Battle of Samar was one of the last big sea battles in the Pacific theater before Japan lost all of its naval power. It happened on October 2, 1944, east of Samar Island, when the Japanese Navy tried to stop the liberation of the Philippines by fighting against the U.S. forces during the Battle of Lady Gulf. They did this by luring several U.S. ships into the battle. Navy task groups into a trap. A Japanese fleet of 23 warships, including the largest battleship ever built, Ambush Tappy 3, a small U.S. force unit of only 13 ships. It was an epic last stand that the Americans won against all odds. Songs and music, after almost three years of fighting in the Pacific, Japanese air supremacy was in full decline. As the Allies moved closer to mainland Japan, the Japanese Imperial Navy and Army looked for new ways to fight. Opponent, music, fortifying islands against amphibious attacks was one strategy, but it didn't stop the US from becoming more powerful. Japan then started sending out bigger fleets to fight against the overwhelming odds since their economy was in bad shape and they couldn't afford to lose more ships and planes for no reason. This forced Japanese commanders to form the combined fleet to conduct naval operations on October 17, 1944, to free the Philippines from Japanese control. Forces landed off the coast of Lady Island under the command of General Douglas MacArthur. The island's native population of almost a million people also helped. At the same time, the Japanese Imperial Navy's first mobile fleet launched Operation Show to meet the American forces off Laity Island in one decisive battle. The plan called for Vice Admiral Jack Kaburo Ozawa and his Northern Force Fleet to draw away the U.S. Third Fleet if the maneuver was successful. Vice Admirals Takio Kurita and Shoji Nishimura would then take advantage of the situation. Both men planned to attack the remaining Americans at Laity by sending their center and southern forces to destroy enemy ships and ground troops. Unfortunately, they fell into a trap when Vice Admiral Korea's center force passed through the Palawan Passage at midnight on October 23. This started the Battle of the Sheboygan Sea. Vice Admiral Korea's center force was made up of destroyers, cruisers, and the colossal super battleships. After getting permission to attack the enemy, two U.S. Navy submarines fired torpedoes and sank two Japanese cruisers. One of them was the 71,000-ton Mushashi, which was destroyed by a squadron of 30 Grumman and Hellcats and several Curtis Helldiver bombers with 500-pound bombs. The destroyer Shimakase saved Kurita and its 600 crew members, and the vice admiral was quickly found. Transferred to the Yamoto to keep leading his force and head west. An hour later, Nishimura's southern force was also attacked but only suffered minor damage. However, they later ran into the American 7th Fleet Support Force and were completely destroyed in what would become known as the Battle of Surigao Strait. Even though the Southern Force was decimated and the Musashi was destroyed, the Americans were falling into a trap. Off Cape Ngana to face Osawa's Northern Force Halsey had 600 planes, 5 aircraft carriers, 6 fast battleships, 8 cruisers, and more than 45 destroyers. Meanwhile, the Northern Force only had 3 light carriers with 100 planes. There were two battleships, three light cruisers, and nine destroyers. It was a sacrifice diversion to get most of Halsey's fleet out of the way, and it worked. As Halsey moved toward Japan's trap, Vice Admiral Kurita gave the order to start the maneuver. He had fainted while he was on the Yamoto, but the ship turned around as the center force headed through the San Bernardino Strait in the middle of the night. The Japanese ships were undetected and faced only scattered light taffy task groups of escort carriers from the American 7th Fleet. The rest of the ships were miles away, fighting on Lady Island. David vs Goliath, the Japanese attack would mostly fall on the northernmost of the carrier units its name is Taffy 3, and it is a ship. The unit did not have the tools to fight large gunships. It was made up of three destroyers, six small escort carriers, and four destroyer escorts. Kurita's forces were made up of the huge Umoto and his 18-inch guns. There were four battleships, 11 destroyers, six heavy cruisers, and two light cruisers. When friendly reconnaissance planes told Clifton about the powerful Japanese naval formation, it quickly became a David vs. Goliath situation. He knew a fierce battle was coming. One shot from the Yamoto was more than enough to destroy any of the ships from Taffy 3, and the Mark 12 5-inch guns on the destroyers were the most powerful weapons the Americans had. 
At 6.50 a.m. on October 25, 1944, Kurita made visual contact with Taffy 2, and the Japanese center force immediately got in formation and closed in at 30 knots. Minutes later, the Yamoto fired some salvos, and the near misses blue smoke screens were used to hide the retreat to Lady Island and keep the Japanese from shooting accurately. While the task force zigzagged through rough waters and huge splashes on the USS Johnston destroyer, a few pilots from the American carriers prepared for a last-ditch attack. Captain Ernest E. Evans knew it was only a matter of time before the Japanese started picking off American ships like ducks. He didn't want to let the Japanese reach Leafy Island and destroy his task group. Without a fight, Evans told his crew to get ready for a furious charge against Corito's 23 ships and her force. It was a legendary battle. Without warning, the 15,000-ton Fletcher-class USS Johnston destroyer broke through the smokescreen and sailed straight into one of the most powerful fleets ever put together. Evan wanted to buy the rest of the Tacky 3 because he needed enough time to get to Liddy Island safely. The Johnston when the destroyer miraculously got within range of the seven times heavier Japanese kimono heavy cruiser, the Johnston had to make dangerous strafing runs through a sky full of smoke and explosions to drop bombs. Evans gave the order to fire on it with all of their 5-inch guns. Within minutes, 200 rounds destroyed the cruiser's superstructure and some of its heavy gun mounts. The Johnston then fired a barrage of 10 torpedoes that broke the Kumano's hull, splitting it in two. Evans had used up all of his ship's heavy payload in this fight, so he told it to turn around at full speed while firing all of its remaining ammunition at enemy ships. 16-inch shells hit the destroyer in the boiler, slowing it down by half. Another hit set off the anti-aircraft ammunition magazine and blew up several decks. The last hit damaged the bridge and destroyed the radar, but the battered and heavily damaged Johnston was still a sight to see against the sky. Captain Evans lost two fingers and got hit in the face with shrapnel, but he got up and kept shouting orders at his crew until the USS Johnston sank. The destroyer's here man and hull and the escort Samuel Roberts came through and joined the suicidal fight. The American destroyer quickly charged into battle and passed by the burning Johnston. Evans and his crew then turned back for a brave last stand. The rest of Taffy 3's group, including the ships Dennis, John C., Butler, and Raymond, also joined the fight, while the few American planes that were still in the air kept doing strafing runs and knocking out every gun they could with their machine guns. At 8.30 a.m., the crew of the USS Hull abandoned ship. Ten minutes later, the USS Gambier Bay started to sink, but its crew was saved and all their torpedoes were gone. At 8.50 a.m., the American destroyers kept zigzagging and firing all the remaining salvos. The USS Samuel B. Roberts was badly damaged, and the Johnston was attacked by the light cruiser Yuhagi and other destroyers at 9.45 a.m. Captain Evans quickly abandoned ship with his crew, and then the unthinkable happened, the Japanese center force started to pull back as the Americans were able to sink three Japanese cruisers and disable another three. Vice Admiral Kurita thought more reinforcements were coming, so over 800 people died and 750 were hurt, and four ships were sunk. The Japanese also lost over 500 men. The battle off Samar was the last time the Japanese Navy was defeated, and its ships stayed in port for most of the rest of the war. Captain Evans was never seen again after he left the Johnston and got on a raft. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor for his bravery. Inspiration to all the soldiers who served with him. Thanks for watching.